Okay, right. Uh, fossil station. If there's any Cali Association members uh, viewing today, they'll have seen issue 142 where fossil station featured as the last article in it. This article appeared in issue 142 of the Caledonian Railway Association Journal of the Two Lines just after the exhibition at Public Shows. For those of you who know the story, I was looking for a station design for my layout. And this uh, plan of book, or book of plans, uh, Southeastern Urban, featured this overstation, over track station. Looking at it, the station would be appear quite narrow, but by taking out one of the rows of canopies on the right here, we could make the station wider, and that seemed to be a better way to go. So the station I chose to model was a local one, Fossil, right on my doorstep. Now this was built back in 1896 as part of the Lanarkshire and the Bartonshire Railway. At this time, Glasgow was a kind of, and the west of Scotland was a kind of industrial Klondike with a huge boom in heavy engineering, shipbuilding, and the like. Uh, there was intense competition north of the river between the Caledonian and North British Railways, and similarly south of the river to a lesser extent between the Cali and the uh, Glasgow and South Western. Also, unusually, was a passenger terminus but a through goods route. The passenger services would come uh, from the south, from Motherland, via the Glasgow Central Low Level Line and from the right or north of Partick, through Maryhill Central and terminate at Possel. The goods uh, traffic came the other way, from Mother Glen up through the switchback line, as it was known to Blornick, and then passed westward through Maryhill and obviously through Possel, and to the Partick and the Clyde Harbours, the Princess Dock, where the exhibition centre now is, and later on to Rossby Dock. Near Clyde Bank. The station itself was predictably closed in the 1960s. Traffic had never been particularly heavy and it was an obvious loss maker. It was converted for use in the 1970s and 80s and gained Class C listing. It was built or probably designed by the same architect that did the Botanic Garden Station in the west end of the city. Unfortunately, it's now derelict. And worse for a modeler, there are no extant plans. However, uh, contacting the Caledonian Railway Association's guru, John Payton, what he did manage to provide uh, instead were a number of photographs. This one dating, I think, from the 1950s from the car there, gives a fairly good idea of the station when it was still just in use. and another view with the, the station name on it as well. So the station there in reasonable condition and an interesting building to model. I was only interested in the top half and didn't need the further downstairs bit to the left either. And I also needed, I think, to telescope it slightly so uh, I had to shrink the depth of it. The station was reached originally by a set of stairways, and you can see the through goods line in the central tunnel underneath. More recent photographs show the station in a deteriorating condition, unfortunately, and this next one is actually quite tragic to view. It's a building very much on the brink. The best way to start seems to be to get a reasonable photograph showing the front of the building, where the distortion of the camera was relatively little. And by doing the old tricks about looking at the size of the windows, about counting bricks and so on, it was able to estimate the frontage in the nature of 60 feet, because I still think in terms of old money. From doing that, was able to scale up the other uh, elevations and draw up some plans. This one of the north elevation, 
and this one of the rear of the stage and the wet LEDs. I also made up a conjectural plan of the interior to try and make sense of the layout from the windows and doors that there were there. I needed to telescope the depth of it slightly to fit in the available space. To confirm this, I visited the site in 2018, and you can see the front of the building is now starting to deteriorate as well. And the, the elevation also not looking too great at all. However, you can see on the right-hand side of that the structure of the canopy, which isn't at all obvious from some of the photographs. A number of people thought I was a worker from the council and wished me luck in preserving the building, which was very touching. I estimated the frontage at 60 feet, but by careful measuring with a double yardstick, I got it to an accurate one of 62 feet, which is good enough for me. The heights, again, are proportionate. I've used a lot of applications of Pythagoras theorem and so on. And I was able to confirm this with the sizes of the doors and windows. I got the overhanging canopy details and close ups of the stone cast edge. So it was time to go. I'd already started provisionally with the idea of a plywood core for strength. Now, this was partly because the, build, the layout would be in the garage and it would be subject to some extremes of temperature, but with the insidious effects of dampness. So taking cognizance of the device from another mayor member, I varnished this plywood core quite heavily to make sure it didn't work. The intricate waste face is far too difficult to model in anything like plywood, so the plywood corridor was moved back and the outer face would be cut. The card's quite good for accuracy and for adhesion of various things, not only plastic, but also glazing strips as well. But plastic cards certainly have the edge for detail for texture and so on. The other materials, the chimney stacks were quite prominent and as a result of that, quite vulnerable to bad handling, especially if it's going to a kitchen. So I purchased a B and Q of some square one centimeter. Uh, aluminium sections. They would do the job there and prevent me and things like that. The mouldings would have to be made from mellow flux, uh, but it's difficult, but not impossible. And acetate for glazing the windows obviously had to be held in place to be away. The window frames I measured, there were about seven or eight different sizes. I could have had them etched. But for good or for ill, I decided to make them from micro strips and use a rebel contactor to hold those together. Time consuming in the extreme. Plywood is easy to work with, but not in any kind of detailed work. It has the advantage of being robust, but it does not lend itself to intricate detail. The card walls, yes, well, they could be made separately and coated with plastic art, and the stone carvings of Millicud made in situ on the flat. Um, the windows again in situ, and that was a time consuming job and a half, and likewise the changes in colouring. So it did mean that what we had to do was make sure that things would be fitting with regular checks and also use stone coins on the building, not for uh, features to hide the common bones. Okay, the plywood core, there it is. And you can see the chimney stacks, one at the corner there with the aluminium section, and one made out of plywood that would be subsequent to spent into the aluminium as well. Uh, that's one of the card shapes on the left there, showing the, the north elevation, and a couple of strengtheners or stabilizers in the center, showing the inferior or back hole. Based inside to construction uh, methods is the waste piece. You can see there that the card inserts 
of the car backing behind the plastic arm there has been cut, uh, cut to shape and then the plastic arm using that template cut to a similar shape and held together with industrial quantity or super glue. Further secured uh, during construction by master screw. The other little tricks, well, the mullions here in both the, those windows are quite simply matchsticks. The thicker mullions here uh, left the plastic art in place, but these had stone facings. So this involved the use of 0.1 plastic art sheeting cut into long strips, glued in place with contacta and left to set and then re glued at each subsequent step. Again, time consuming, but quite rewarding because it does come out rather well when it's, it's ready for painting. Uh, the making of these windows, I think the best word to describe that is a nightmare. However, we got to do it. The internal details, well, the idea was originally to have the thing lit, so certain details might come up and uh, be eliminated. So there you have the station master stair and his bathroom at the top of the stair, where the light is the work. But that's another story. The central chimney stack was by far the slimmest and the most vulnerable. So what I did there was use the chimneys, the two bits that you can see sticking out at the top. Those are built of brass rod and they go the whole length of the chimney stack for strength. The walls are then carved and then uh, coated with plastic art as well. The chimney goes down to what I assume was the main waiting room. So it You've got a very crude kind of fireplace and doorway there. East face gables, again, these would have plywood backing, but while building them, it's the old card and then plastic card stuck on and the detail made up with the very thin plastic card sheet. These gables here were a bit of a nightmare. The ones on the west face, they're straight, but the east face have these twiddly bits. So what it did mean was sticking a bit of the strip down, tacking it in place, waiting for it to dry, tacking another bit and trying to curve the thing, but not putting on too much conductor so that the original came away. Uh, a trial of patience. Having done that, I then discovered that the plastic art sheeting I put on there was in fact suitable for old age, eh, for old age rather than for double O. So I had to actually unpick that, cut round all the doors and relay them with the right size of a eh, plastic card stick. Yes, when you're working against the deadline, it's not what you really want to have done. However, we got there in the end. There you can see that the brickwork has had a light wash of yeah, acrylic paint, and then that will be highlighted later. The uh, strips here for uh, holding the station name boards are in place, and you can see the, the millipod decorated as well above the window. Painting, much easier done before the center. No two faces like that. So red brick acrylic, and then the white acrylic wall. And Bizarrely, something that works relatively well, it's possible using a 50 pence set of crayons from the local pharmacy, using red, orange and brown to highlight them. And it's a very satisfying job if you have nothing better to do in a winter house. The stonework was, again, acrylic paint, the, the Vallejo range is very good for that, and the one nearest to sandstone seems to be Sierra Astura. The window frames, well, white, micro strip of white, slight difference. For the exteriors and interiors, quite a good uh, website to go to station cover for info. And uh, his take on this is that the exterior of the woodwork is a yellow brown shade known as duck spoon. The doors are purple brown, very much like the coach work or balances on the low coach and the window frames are white. So that was a key. 
underneath the canopy, the underframe to reflect the light. For the interiors, it's a light stone wall with a, a brown shade. He also gives you suitable colors that we do for this and um, precision paint feature, uh, the purple brown and the green, and even gives you a light to color match. So, useful site for you. Another source that's possible to use is printed photographs. Uh, these are quite popular around the turn of the last century. This one is of Straven in Mount Lanarkshire. And looking, I think it's rather nice. What do you think to get her? Yes, it's, it's one of those sphincter tightening moments when you really have to just get on with it. But having tested the thing as it went, you know, uh, this I approached with a reasonable degree of confidence. Maybe I shouldn't have spent so much time on the Malupa putting on the uh, number, the, sorry, the date of the, the building, but you know, it, it's there, it had to be done. Construction again, or sticking again, you can see the internal plywood pores with the, the ones on the east gable on the left and the internal one on the right next to the west piece. Uh, again, industrial quantities, super glue, and then you close your eyes and put on the marking tool to remove it. Uh, with the gables in place, the roof I couldn't make in one piece because of the complexity of it, of the different lines, and really it had to be done. And this was perhaps one of the other great regrets I have in doing this, that the, lift, uh, that the, the roof is not liftable or removable. However, you, you do what you can. Nearly there now, the wiring there for lights that in fact don't work, but you can see that the uh, purple brown uh, has been would, has been extended to the, the mock Tudor gable and so on, and that the lead flashing is almost in place as well. The canopy had to be made by twisting brass rodding to hold it up. That was the only thing I could think of that would be strong enough. Uh, plastic arches would not be too fragile. And there we are, ready to roll, the flashing in place, the roof painted, and just the chimney stacks to be popped in. These are removable so that, if necessary, the building can be turned upside down and worked from underneath. The overall roof is quite simply just four dapple bits. The paint is the cinnamon brown. The only thing missing from the main building is the rather prominent clock. However, that I can look without. The platform canopies. Again, John Payton of the CRA provided some pictures. This one of Mary Hill Central. After closure, the tracks have been lifted. And you can see that the lattice work isn't too dissimilar to what Dabble provides. Interestingly, the tunnel in the distance eh, is the one that leads to Corsal, the other small golf course. Similar canopies exist at Brecon, which is now a heritage station and a heritage line. And again, the dapple ones will do. However, a bit of subterfuge there. Now, you might think that the white struts carry the weight of the canopy. In fact, the canopies are clear plastic arch and the white struts are merely decoration. Okay, I always do like to see trains running. Some of you may have seen this before, but here we go again. And it's the class 55 of the open. And the 782 class whining through and need a little bit. And finally, an overall view of the station. I had meant to explore further doing the, the lighting of this, but I came across 
an unfinished uh, salvageable Denalister one, which looks quite good pulling the Maid of Morven, the only observation car to run in a pre in Scottish really. At some speed as well, you'll note. But it gives you an idea of the overall flutter of the Victorian or Edwardian state. And here we have a view of the state. Okay, next stage. Now, <laughs> that's one way of putting it. The other way is really saying things I meant to do and haven't got around to doing yet. I'm looking for ideas. I'm still hoping to get light into the station, but the thing is, the station is a lifting section. So I'm quite happy to take on board ideas from the membership about the best way of doing that. Current thinking is to use a couple of very thin brass strips uh, that would make contact when the station is in position. Again, a random lights module would be quite nice, platform lights, street lights, and the like. Looking back, would I have done things differently? Well, the thing did take three months. A month in the planning and drawing, and another two in the building of it. And this was done against a couple of deadlines. One, the 18 month or so deadline to get the thing ready for exhibition, and one, the self imposed deadline of about three months because I was going to Australia on holiday, copying our great leader, David Dick. Um, but it did take a fair bit of time out of the structure. But perhaps, yes, uh, in retrospect, allow yourself plenty of time for these kind of things. Again, the biggest single regret is that the roof is not able to be removed. And that I should have tasted the electrics before I put the thing together. However, you live and learn. But it still is, I think, a nice piece of work and a worthy center. 